What's up, everybody? It's too legit. I'm just checking in here. I'm gonna give you guys some of my thoughts and and uh, some of the default settings that I that I use for Scavenger in the version two. Uh, so I'm gonna walk you through some of the different use cases and show you kind of how I've been running uh, Scavenger and also, like I said, some of the different use cases because uh, it can assist you in your trading. If you're a manual trader, it can you can have it just fully automated. Uh, but again. You, you have to remember that it doesn't matter what software you use, you always need to manage and check it. There is no such thing as a fully automated system. If anybody says that, they're they're teaching you wrong. So let's just walk through some of some of my kind of default. I'll give you a range. So for example, uh, I'll give you a range of settings and kind of why I'm doing the way I'm doing. But again, I'm still testing a lot of this, like uh, a lot of you are. Uh, because there's so many different ways that you can use it or, or run the bot. So, for example, uh, contract adjustment. I, I typically use anywhere between 0.8 to 1.2%. Um, I also run it on 3x leverage. The reason I choose to use 3x leverage is because it's kind of like a natural stop loss. I don't have to put in a stop loss. And for a market-making bot, it to be honest, it's it's... It's not really something that you want to do, but of course, everybody trades or uses the uh, scavenger how they want. So we wanted to make sure that you guys had the option for a stop loss. But like I said, I use 3x for a natural stop loss. And uh, but going through again, so 0.8 to 1.2%, I like to use, uh, but I'm at using 1% in this example. Um, max position, I, I, I would suggest to stay somewhere between 55 to 65 percent. Um, obviously, you see 67 here. I'm, I'm, you know, depending on how aggressive you are and your risk tolerance, you can go higher. But I think keeping a cushion of of for your balance is is, is key for risk management. Um, I would go no higher than 75 percent ever. Uh, the only time I would ever go higher is if I was going to be putting in, in more capital into into your uh, into one of your bots, long or short. So that's that's basically uh, what I do there. The trailing stop loss, I I, I don't use this. Um, I am I kind of know manually when I want to get in and out. I have targets set based on technical analysis. However, um, I am open to uh, any suggestions or if you guys have found something that is, is really good or useful with this, let me know. I just post it in, in the lounge or, or wherever. But I don't, I have not used this and I have not tested with it. The take profit, uh, take profit, I, I have found, I've done testing from $8 all the way to $50. Uh, I think one of the sweet spots that I found effective was around 30 to 35. Um, but right now I'm trying to see in the middle. So 10 is too small. I'm missing out on profits. You know, anything past 35, 40 ish, you, you, you start to mi miss opportunities to get out quick. Um, so right now I'm kind of just trying to test around the 20 area, but um, I, I, I have found around 30 to 33-ish to be kind of um, a, a good number. Again, I've only had a couple, a couple like a month or yeah, a month or two of, of testing with the take profit a difference, but I will continue to see what happens with that and let you guys know. Uh, going back, entry protection. So entry protection is huge, it's key. So Right now, it's based on the one-hour time frame candles. So soon, when we release the the multi time frames, that is going to be epic. That's that's going to be a game changer. But for now, this this is one way that you can really really be safe and make sure that you're doing things and, and protecting your 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 capital, your balance. So I I like to be so in a long in the long bot. I like to be anywhere between 65 to 85. Uh, now you might be wondering 85, that sounds a little high. So yeah, that, it's super conservative, but just remember that it, that's on the hourly. So the hourly can change like that. We've seen it a million times, but, uh, I typically run it around 
65 to 75 that that's kind of the area that i like if i really want to be open kind of when it's when there's some good volatility uh, i'll go as low as maybe even 60 um and i am i'm okay with that but for now 65 70 is is my preferred area uh prevention uh prevent entry this uh i unfortunately have not done this and i need to the known pro alerts is like game changing for putting together with this bot uh, you can use any any indicator but um, personally, I, I, I use known pro alerts. So uh, that basically will allow you to get into a start scavenger upon getting a signal to buy. And once you have bought with your indicator or known alerts or whatever, whomever, whatever indicators, it then will kick off the bot. So it, it's really, it's a really nice way to have a, a alerts via trading view or, and then having scavenger take over and and do what it does best and that's make money so right now i'm not using it just because i'm a little bit lazy and testing so many different things so i want to first get that the other testing done and then i'll start um I'll, i will end up using this with uh no alerts um market change protection so this one is uh a little tricky because being that it's on the hour i have tested anywhere between 0.8 up to 1.8 if you have the the market change too low uh it might it might stop you from getting into positions when you might want to so you know you gotta you gotta find a sweet spot that you're comfortable with but to me it being that everything is based on the hour candle or the hour time frame uh i like to be anywhere between 1.2 to 1.8 i'm at 1.5 right now for this for for this testing for this week and what that what the reason why is if the market moves one and a half percent within the hour i know that i don't want to really buy i want to wait till the market calms down and starts to consolidate um the smart channel the smart channel i've recently been testing more lately uh but just to give you some basic math on how i do it on 3x well this would apply for any any leverage amount you take the total amount of contracts that you can buy with your whole balance and you take 25%. So that's what I do. I take 25% of the total amount of contracts I can use on my total balance. And then I use that for my total uh, contract amount limit. So, and then for the boundary, what I like, I've tested anywhere between 80 to 200. Um, when there's low volatility and low volume, it's 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 super important to not build up too big of a position. So that's why I choose the 25 percent. And I would even say maybe 10 uh, percent or 15 percent would probably be even better. Uh, and the reason is we've seen this time and time again, guys let's, and, and girls. Let's, let's remember that um, it can it, there could be no volume and it could we could just be going sideways in a chop zone for weeks, a month, two months and then if you build up a position too big boom you're going to hit and get liquidated so uh, or liquidated or stopped out either one <clears throat> so it's it's important that you it, you look back in, in the in the charts and what i found that the average chops owner or when there's low volume low vol volatility um i have found the range around between 80 to 200 dollars is is the fluctuation where uh where the where the market kind of bounces up and down when there's when there's really no buyers and sellers so right now i i just i like i like 100 uh it's right it's right in the middle um but i even probably would say 125 150 uh so if you're going to use a higher percentage of your balance for the total contract amounts i would then make sure that you use a higher boundary because if you're gonna if you're gonna build up a larger position, it's important that you protect your balance. It's all about risk management, guys. So uh, if you're gonna use a higher percentage in contract amounts compared to your balance, make sure that you 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 know you might want to. I suggest personally that you use uh, the channel boundary a little higher. So maybe 125 to 200. You could even maybe do 300, uh, to be honest, if you want to be really uh, conservative and protect your balance. If you're going to use a lower percentage of your balance for the, contra uh, the channel contract limit, you can use a, a lower channel boundary because then you're not getting, you're not using, you're not risking that much and you're allowing the, the scavenger to, to, to market mate. 
Uh, but again, I am still testing this out. Uh, there, there's there's a million uh, variables and possibilities that you can use with these settings, and we're going to continue to push these out. So let's let's see what happens. And again, you guys, so let's let's keep posting our results. Let's keep on sharing them and helping each other out, and uh, keep them moving forward. I just want to thank everybody for your time and support from day one. Uh, some of you guys have been with us since the start. This is a bot created by the community for the community. That's why we don't charge anything up front. Um, so thank you. Appreciate it.